Welcome to Across Africa, our weekly look at stories from across the continent. I'm Georgia Calvin Smith, and this week, with millions around the world having spent more time on social media than ever before, the support many have been offering each other has also been shadowed by a rise in abuse. We head to Togo, where some women say that they're fending off more sexist cyberbullying than ever before. Also, Bongi's builders are back at construction sites, giving the city a facelift. In an industry dominated by men, we bring you a report on the women workers changing the landscape of the Central African Republic. And we head out for a virtual tour of the Rome of Africa. Leptis Magna was once one of the most beautiful cities of the Roman Empire. But the Libyan ruins are today on UNESCO's list of at-risk heritage sites. But first, COVID-19's meant many of us around the world have been stuck at home and so using social media more than ever before. Some rights campaigners warn that that's led to a rise in cases of sexist cyberbullying. Africa's no exception. This next report takes us to the Togolese capital of Lome, where our reporters met with victims of online abuse. This 26-year-old Togolese girl was harassed on social media. And Marie says that an editor taking advantage of her inexperience, promised to publish her first book. The relationship quickly deteriorated. He started by making sexist remarks, mocking comments. He made fun of my physical appearance, things that were meant to bring me down, until the day I exploded. There are few official figures on online harassment. But according to a study conducted by Internet Without Borders, shortly before the pandemic, 45% of West African women active online were victims of sexist cyberbullying attacks. Before the pandemic, there were many cases, but it was not as pronounced as that. Lockdowns and the restrictions to movement brought in by the pandemic have seen the use of social networks in the country grow by more than 50%. Matrimoniat provides support for all survivors of cyber violence. We've had to deal with cases of identity theft, cases of physical assault. It always starts on social media. The consequences are always excruciating around us. Insults, threats, intimidation. Grace was humiliated after she posted online comments defending victims of rape and teenage pregnancy. She also spoke against those who believe African women should be submissive. I was traumatized because the people were not just attacking me. They also wanted to attack my family. I never imagined that I could feel unsafe on the Internet. None of these victims filed a complaint because online harassment is not sanctioned in Togo. There is a legal vacuum in Togo. The national institutions are struggling to keep up with the evolution of things. There is no provision in the penal code regarding cybercrime. In Turgo, the law only covers harassment and invasion of privacy. Next, we head over to Central African Republic. An electoral crisis and fighting between national forces and rebels has chased away many investors. But things have started picking up and construction sites have been reopening. That scene, more women finding opportunities in the usually male-dominated industry. Our reporter, Clemente Roma, went to Bangui to meet the women shattering stereotypes and building new opportunities for themselves and their city. Brick by brick, Central African Republic's capital is getting a facelift. After decades of instability, construction sites are once again flourishing throughout Bangui, executed and managed by new workers. I need to level up here, otherwise it's going to affect the works. Evody is 24 years old. She is one of the few female civil engineers in the country. She says she has to prove her skills on the job every day. When you're a young woman, to give orders here to the workers, it's complicated. The men can't stand it, but that's the job. They have to submit to the orders so that the project can move forward. Completing projects and also passing on knowledge to would-be engineers, Evody is sharing her passion with our intern, guiding our trainee to succeed in an industry that's flourishing in our country. 
We have the same ideas and the same ambitions, so she inspires me. A lot of women think it's a boy's job, but they're wrong. It's easy for us if you give it your all. Here is the manager who gave them their big break. Yashian Yu is the manager of one of the largest construction companies in the country, which is behind this 4 million euro project. There are excellent women in the country, with lots of skills. We try to support them. In China, we say women hold the path the sky. We should be doing everything together. In the same neighborhood, on the third floor of a building which will soon have five, we meet Leonel Pagen. She's been a scrap metal worker for six years already, a job that allows her to feed her family. I noticed that few women did this job. So I decided to learn and train, and now I'm a skilled worker. Women must dare and arm themselves with courage to develop the country. Evody, Jennifer and Leonel, this new generation of builders remain an exception in the Central African Republic, one of the worst countries in the world in terms of gender equality, according to the United Nations. Now, the Benin bronzes are thousands of sculptures plundered by British troops in the 19th century from the Kingdom of Benin. Now, part of Nigeria, citizens there have long demanded the bronzes be returned. Artists are now offering to donate artworks to the British Museum in London as a way to encourage reciprocal return of historic stolen items. Nick Shima has more. Artists in Nigeria's Benin city have taken an unusual decision. They say they want to donate their artwork to the British Museum. The institution in London has been criticised for not returning famous Benin bronzes that were looted by British troops in 1897. Artist Saikna Okoro explained the idea behind the project. We're actually offering this plaque um, to the British Museum as a way of re-establishing, changing the narrative between museums and a lot of the cultures that have been hurt and by the stolen artifacts is a way of being able to show that we can actually give you new artifacts. We can give you artifacts, an artifact that you know doesn't have the taints and the, the word of loot and theft associated with it. The artworks on offer include a bronze plaque and a life-size ram made entirely from spark plugs. These are some of the works in the British Museum. They are among Africa's finest and most culturally significant artifacts. Zaikna Okoro has flown to London where he says he has a meeting with curators from the British Museum. The descendants of the people who casted those bronzes, you know, they don't actually get, they've, they've never seen that work, you know, because most of them can't fly and afford to fly into London to come to the British Museum. And they have these catalogues, which are these books, you know, like PDF copies of the catalog from the British Museum, which they use to, you know, to reference the work of their ancestors. And I think it's so sad. German museums have said they want to return the Benin bronzes to Nigeria. But the British Museum, which houses the most important collection of the items, has yet to make a clear commitment. Once amongst the Roman Empire's most beautiful cities, Leptis Magna in Libya has been neglected for decades. The ruins have been further endangered amidst the chaos that's racked the country since its revolution. A year-long lull in violence has sparked hopes, though, for Libya's rebirth, and with that, that of Leptis Magna. Emerald Maxwell tells us more. For more than 2,000 years, it survived successive waves of conquerors. Once one of the most beautiful cities of the Roman Empire, Leptis Magna has also been mostly spared the violence that's racked Libya since the 2011 revolt. But it faces another threat, neglect. The threats that the city faces are indirect and come in different forms. There is the lack of supplies, which never existed in the first place, the fact that archaeological digs have been interrupted, the virtually non-existent means and support from the government. Founded in the 7th century BC by Phoenician sailors, then conquered by Rome, Leptis Magna was the birthplace of Septimius Severus, who rose to become emperor. With well-preserved ruins, including a large basilica, a racecourse and an amphitheatre overlooking the Mediterranean, it has tourism potential. And yet there's barely a visitor in sight. Tourism is scarce in Libya. We're not set up for it. For instance, the city's train needs to be maintained for transportation for tourists, 
passageways needs to be paved. We need more lighting on air conditioning in the summer. After 10 years of conflict and state collapse, Libya's current unity government has other priorities. But Leptis Magna's custodians hope that with an October 2020 ceasefire largely holding, the site will finally attract the attention it deserves. Now, the daredevil acrobatics of spinning attracts crowds of hundreds of people in South Africa. The official motorsport has underground roots, as it began in townships in the 80s, when gangsters would show off by stunting and spinning cars whilst hanging out open doors. Well, today, professional spinners travel the world to compete in their pimped-up rides. Nicola Schema tells us more. If you like sports cars, smoke and acrobatics, you'll definitely enjoy spinning. Today, it's an official motorsport in South Africa. It all began under apartheid when gangsters stole luxury cars and then showed them off in their townships. Nowadays, spectators pay to come and watch spinning. Thursday here, you get people that come from New York, Australia, wherever, to come and witness a spinning. It's, 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 it's an attraction now in South Africa, but... Um, this is our first show since COVID. Drivers spend hours customising their cars. Car spinning is a form of motorsport where you are allowed to do what you want and be whoever you want to be. It's a freestyle kind of sport. It's so much fun. And the reason why I'm spinning is to show females that you can do anything you set your mind to doing. The latest show attracted more than a thousand spectators who paid about three euros to attend. The reason why we come here is because we got a uh, we got a basically got a different lifestyle. We got a different hobby. We love spinning. We love smelling smoke. That's what we love doing. Critics denounce a noisy and polluting activity, but fans stress it's a multiracial entertainment that helps them forget about the drugs and violence that are so prevalent in their communities. Well, that's it for across Africa. Thanks for joining us, and do so again if you can. Till then, take care.